today on You're Watching a Movie with Silas Lindenstein. I'm talking about my top 10 Christmas films of all time. You're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein in the theaters you find us. So go on and press play to rewind us. This speech that is timeless. Love it like it or we lose it, can't find it. And we ain't keen on being reminded about the film if it isn't tough. We spend a lot of time at the cinema. It's just me and my friends, we watch plenty stuff. For movies, yeah, I've been above. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to You're Watching a Movie with Silas Lindenstein. I am your host, Silas Lindenstein. Welcome. Welcome. Today, I am talking about the top 10 Christmas films of all time. Well, they're my top 10. I think they should be yours, too. And some of them may be on your list. Some of them you may not be aware of, and I think you should be. And so that's why I'm doing this episode. I apologize. This episode should have come out early December so that you would have had all of December to watch these movies, but I didn't get it done. I I was busy writing it, but I never got it produced. So here it is finally. So in these final days till Christmas or for next year, I'll just reuse this episode every year now. Um, Hopefully or hopefully or maybe some new Christmas movies come out or maybe some of you sway me to move my top 10 around. Maybe that'll happen. So then it'll it'll update. But for now, uh, so so look at it this way. You got a few days left till Christmas. If you haven't seen some of these movies, maybe you can just pop one of these in for the year. Or or if we've learned anything from Christmas tales that maybe Christmas should be in your heart all year, and so these movies can be watched at any time. I'm gonna start at number ten and work my way down. Coming in at number 10, Love Actually. This super popular rom-com Christmas film is set in Britain over the course of five weeks leading up until Christmas. It interconnects 10 different stories centered around the one human emotion that connects us all, love, in all its aspects. And I know, I get it. I hear some of you cringing. I know there are some scenes in this film that by 2022 standards don't work to say the least they don't play well in our society now but in 2003 we had some different sensibilities it's not giving an excuse to that it's just what was going on and i admit i even have moments watching this film that i'm like oh we thought that was okay oh we thought that was funny Ugh. And I admit, I have some very sentimental reasons for liking this film, which I will share about in my autobiography, which I hope you will read one day. But I know I'm not the only one because it plays about a thousand times between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So a few other people like this movie. It also has a good mix of established and up and coming stars at the time in 2003. So it's a wonderful blend of actors in it. And it's like kind of visiting some old friends every year. It's one of my favorite films that interconnect stories so much and how you don't even know how interconnected they are until the end. And it's about my favorite thing. Love. Number nine, Home Alone. In this 1990 Chris Columbus film, when Kevin McAllister is accidentally left home alone, just days before Christmas, Kevin must learn independence while he defends his home from two burglars, one of which is Joe Pesci. This is the slapstick comedy that launched the career of Macaulay Culkin and the film franchise. Macaulay Culkin starred in another one, uh, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Then the Home Alone series kind of went on without him. I don't know. I didn't watch the other ones. Incidentally, Home Alone was the highest grossing live action comedy all the way until 2011. Number eight, Klaus. This 2019 Spanish American animated film is a modern classic. It has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, but most people haven't even heard of it because it's buried in a mountain of Netflix movies. After proving himself to be the worst student at the academy, a postman is sent to a frozen town in the north where he discovers a reclusive toy maker named Claus. Klaus? Claus? This family comedy is voiced by Jason Schwartzman, J.K. Simmings, Rashida Jones, and Will Sasso, just to name a few. I describe this film as a gem. This gem of a film won a BAFA and an Annie Award, and it was nominated for an Oscar. It's a little animated holiday film that deserves a lot more eyeballs than it gets. So check it out. Klaus. 
available only on Netflix. Number seven, Scrooged, starring Bill Murray. Scrooged is one of my favorite modern day adaptations of A Christmas Carol. It's very funny, but the humor from 1988 probably doesn't translate very well to a modern audience. But the comedy is only matched by how touching the film is. In this version, Frank Cross, played by Bill Murray, is a wildly successful television producer whose cold ambition and curmudgeonly nature has driven away the love of his life. Claire, played by Karen Allen. But after firing a staff member, Elliot, played by Bobcat Goldwaith, Frank is visited by a series of ghosts that give him a chance to redeem himself and reevaluate his actions and right the wrongs of his past. It follows the story of A Christmas Carol while it's also producing a live production of A Christmas Carol. So it's a story within a story, but that story is the story that they're doing. Trust me, Scrooged, available video on demand everywhere, or you can borrow it from me. Number six, the George C. Scott version of A Christmas Carol. Of all the serious adaptations of A Christmas Carol, I would say that this one has to be my favorite. George C. Scott plays the miser Ebenezer Scrooge, who is redeemed on Christmas Eve after being visited by a series of three ghosts, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas future. George C. Scott is powerful in the role. He's a, he's a fantastic actor, and he makes this worth watching almost every year. It is a timeless classic. It is well done. It never seems dated. It's just a really nice version of the classic tale. Number five, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Christmas doesn't even start in my household until I see the Griswolds light up their Christmas tree. This 1989 slapstick comedy tells the story of the Griswold family who spends Christmas vacation at home with their relatives and the ensuing mayhem. Written by John Hughes and starring Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, and Randy Quaid. Number four, A Christmas Story. I know this has to be a good film because I've seen it no less than 837,000 times. And I still have it on in the background every Christmas Eve. This 1983 film is set in the 1950s. It's the story of Ralphie longing to receive the toy of his dreams. The Red Ryder Carbon Action 200 shot model range air rifle from the comical view of a nine-year-old boy. The cable network TNT has a tradition of playing this from 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve for 24 hours until 7 p.m. on Christmas Day. So be sure to check it out then. But whatever you do, avoid the sequel that came out this year on HBO Max. Ooh. Number three, It's a Wonderful Life. The ultimate Christmas movie that made me love Christmas movies. And it also includes one of my favorite scenes in cinema, the phone scene. If you know the film, you may know the phone scene. This classic 1964 film finds George Bailey about to try and end his life when his guardian angel Clarence steps in and distracts him. Clarence then shows George what the world would be like if George Bailey had never been born. It's a story that taught us that wealth is not measured by money, but rather how you touch other people's lives. And it stars Jimmy Stewart. The film is in black and white. And as a kid, it's a film I always avoided because I wanted to see things in color. And it would always play every Christmas. And I avoided it for years and years. And then one year in college, I just sat down and watched it. And ever since then, it's been one of my favorite movies of all time. Not just a Christmas movie, and it certainly is a Christmas movie. It's not just a wonderful life. It's a wonderful film. Number two, this is where it starts getting interesting. Uh, he, my last two films are ones that people may not expect. I have left off some films that I think people would expect to be on this list, and and I'm sure some people will have some strong opinions about what I left off. but. Here it is, my final two. Number two, Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. It is a musical fantasy. Decades after being betrayed by his apprentice, a once joyful toy maker finds new hope when his bright young granddaughter arrives on his doorstep. It's a star-studded and mostly black cast, which in itself is a rare treat. It stars Forrest Whitaker, Keegan-Michael Key, Hugh Bonneville, Annika Nani Rose, Felicia Rashad, and Ricky Martin. Yeah, Ricky Martin. 
Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey is also only available on Netflix. And my number one favorite Christmas film of all time, The Ref. This film is hilarious. It is by far the funniest Christmas film I've ever seen. It's a dark comedy, but it's comedy. This 1994 film stars Dennis Leary, Judy Davis, and I apologize, Kevin Spacey. Yes, yes, I know. We have canceled Kevin Spacey, rightly so. But they're in the argument of canceling the artist and not the artist art there are a lot of other very talented people who worked on this film uh, both on screen and off screen and all of those people are not kevin spacey so i will re-watch the film that i've enjoyed so much for them leary plays a burglar who ends up taking hostage a married couple who is also in couples therapy and ends up having to pretend to be their therapist on christmas eve during a christmas eve dinner that they are having with the rest of their family this is a film where a lot of the characters are at the end of the rope you know they they're they're at a breaking point and it comes on Christmas Eve. And, you know, it's, it's about interactions and interpersonal communications with their family. And it, it comes to head here at Christmas Eve dinner when they got almost nothing to lose. And while they just want to get through that evening, they also want to get through life. And it is about a couple at crossroads deciding what they're going to do with each other and with their family. And if this is going to be something that works, it's honest and brutal and brutally funny. The Ref, my number one favorite Christmas film. Okay, I got it. I know I made a number of controversial decisions in this list. I know I left off big ones like Elf. I know I'm, my daughter already yelled at me about that one, but I'm sure there's more I left off. Which ones am I missing? Tell me. Tell me which ones did I get right? Which ones did I get wrong? Have you seen all of these films? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think? What's on your top 10 list? Tell me in the comments. Well, folks, that's all I got. Um, that's my list. I'm going to do some more lists. People seem to enjoy lists a lot, and I got a lot of things to list, a lot of rankings that I think are pretty important, and I want to share them with you. So I will be doing that in the future. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein. You're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein in the theaters you find us. So go on and press play to rewind us. This speech that is timeless. Love it like it or we lose it, can't find it. And we ain't keen on being reminded about the film if it isn't tough. We spend a lot of time at the cinema. It's just me and my friends, we watch plenty stuff. For movies, yeah, I've been above. Whether big or they small, no, for me don't make a difference. Love them You're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein in the theaters you find us. So go on and press play to rewind us. This it is timeless Love it like it or we lose it Can't find it And we ain't keen on being reminded But the film if it didn't hit No Gotta lose it Watch movies with my friends Bringing joy That's the blueprint So come on and let's do this They paint behind us And relax your mind Come watch a movie with Silas Hey folks did you like that video? Well then hit the like button And then subscribe So you can be notified The next time a new episode drops